Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I've been somewhat snowed under this week testing the new Ryzen 4000 APUs, so my emulation guide's a little later than it would normally be. But we are back, looking today at the Sega Saturn. And if you are interested, I have put links in the description below to those Ryzen 4000 APU review videos. So the Sega Saturn is an absolutely first class console, with some brilliant arcade ports. It was somewhat ahead of its time in terms of its capability, but because of its dual processor build, it was an absolute pick to code, and in the end it fell foul of that because third party providers couldn't be bothered to put the effort in to code their games. But still, definitely worth having a look at. So let's get on with emulating it. So you all know the drill by now, you will of course need some games for this console, and I of course am not going to tell you in a YouTube video where you might find them. I am however going to refer you to the excellent guide I attach below, links to my website, which provides some further instructions on setting up the emulator and some very useful resources. I also have in the second folder the BIOSes for the Sega Saturn. Now I have the USA, Japanese and European BIOSes. You might not need those depending on what games you have, but it's worth getting them. So let's have a look at the emulator. So I have a link in the description to the Medmathon website. I think it means my emulator doesn't need a something name. So here we are. So very quick to download. Once we have that in our downloads folder, we'll just unzip it and we'll just move that onto the desktop. Perhaps rename it. It's a bit of a mouthful on there, isn't it? Let's simply call it Mednathan. Okay, so click on the execute file and it won't do much apart from just create some more folders which are very useful. So the first thing we'll need to do is make sure we put our BIOSes into this folder where the executable is. So we'll just copy those and drag them across. Now to use the an emulator is quite straightforward. Although there is no GUI, you simply just drag your game across onto the executable and it will fire up. So let's just demonstrate that for you. Open up a game. Now depending on how you've downloaded games, you may have a zip file which you'll need to unzip. So you go into that folder, look there for the Q file, drag that across over the executable and then let go. And there we are. Here's our BIOS starting and then nothing is working. So we'll just let the game start up and then we'll map our controllers. So to map a controller, you press Alt, Shift and number one, or number two, three, four, five, whichever controller you're mapping, but number one for us. So again, that's Alt, Shift, number one, at the bottom of the screen you'll see pop up the input guide. So you press each button twice and it will map it in. So we'll quickly just run through that now. Now how you map the buttons up to you. I use an Xbox One controller and tend to map X, A and B for A, B and C and then L1, Y and R1 for the top three buttons. Start is start and select for mode. And mode's quite useful, we'll look at that again later to select different controllers for different types of games. There we are, configuration finished. Let's get playing. Now if you've seen these videos before, you know how much I love Sega Rally. So have a quick look at that. Not quite as pretty as the arcade version of Model 2. Still looks pretty good and plays as it should. 
So I'll just look around a few of these corners, give it a bit of a go. Controls are really responsive. <laughs> I'm obviously crap. Um, but yeah, really good. Plays really fast. It's the speed really that, that makes up for the graphics on this. It does move at pace. So in order to get into full screen, once you've started your game, and we're just going to start up another one now, you simply press Alt and Enter, and that will put you into full screen mode. Here we go now with Virtual Fighter 2. Again, all looking pretty decent. Again, the graphics aren't quite as good as the arcade board, but it looks pretty good. So a few things else we can do now. So if you're having problems emulating the games, all you can try to do is go into the CD cache here and change that to one from zero. What that does is cache all of the CD image into the memory and that should make it much easier to run. I personally didn't have any problems at all with this. But I'm just showing you this if you're using a, a slightly lower end machine. This does make it a bit easier to play the games. So in order to get the machine to open up in full screen, we scroll down here to this line and I'll leave a link in the description below and change that to full. We'll just save that back and then we're done. And then we copy the game across. Now we're into proper full screen widescreen mode. 16.9. Now it's up to you if you want to emulate like this. It's a preference, obviously you might prefer the, the classic 4x3, you might even like it in a window. But I think it's worth showing you this and I think it does look very good actually in 16x9. It doesn't play any differently and I think the stretch looks proportionate, so I think it's worth having a go. As you can see it's Daytona USA, and again, graphics not quite as good as the arcade board, but plays really smoothly and really nicely with a controller. So moving on then to Virtual Cop 2, I said we come back to that control shift gamepad thing. So helpfully you can scroll through different controllers on the McDuffin emulator. So by pressing control shift and one, we've now selected the mouse. You can see it moves much quicker and is much better for these light gun games. So we'll just blast away a few bad guys. This is pretty close, I think, to the arcade board. And again, with the mouse, it moves really quite nicely. You can use the controller if you want to put it into a cabinet or on a, a console under the TV, but it does obviously play much, much smoother with a mouse. You can move much quicker across the screen than trying to scroll the control pad. Lovely, okay. It's gonna play a few more games now for you to have a look at, and then we're pretty much done.
Okay, YouTube, I think that's probably about us for now. Hope that guide was useful. Manhattan's a fairly straightforward emulator to use, and I think the Sega Saturn does look fantastic on this. There are other alternatives available, but I don't emulate quite as well as this, so if you've got a machine worth its salt, this is definitely the way to go. As you know, we provide a weekly guide to emulation on this channel, as well as monthly builds, new builds and old builds, and other components and tech reviews, so really do consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and what you might like me to have a look at next time. But until the next one, go well!